VIC Fellowship, and VIC stands for Vaccine Information Coalition. You're listening to Progressive Radio Network, the most listened to, commercial-free, and truth radio program in the world. My name is Renee, and my husband Gary is co-hosting today. The title of our show is What in the Cell is Going On? We're on every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, which can be accessed live on the front page of of PRN.FM or later on the front page of our VACinfo.org website. We thank this radio station for allowing us to now have any questions you may have answered on next week's show. The voicemail line is 862-800-6805. Just leave your name, your question, and let them know it's for our show. We are blessed again this week to have both Phyllis and Stephen Fisher as our guests today. They founded Fisher Landscape Design and Consultation, specializing in creative, eco-friendly landscape and horticultural services for over 30 years. We are very excited to continue our wonderful show from last week, and welcome again. (laughs) Well, thank you so much, and Gary, it's nice to be here with you. Yeah, it's (laughs) nice to be here with you. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say that, uh, like last week, I had mentioned that we had made an immediate connection with Renee. Uh-huh. Uh, as kindred spirits trying to get uh, truth out about information that would improve the quality of a person's life. Absolutely. And so uh, I see that you're dedicated to that, and Phyllis and I have also been dedicated to that. Absolutely. So uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, what's interesting, uh, what I teach Stephen and Phyllis is um, all, I'm all about the cell. If you study my work, it's uh, one disease repackaged 40,000 different ways. But the uh-huh. cell malfunctions is really what causes illness. And the body gives off symptoms telling you what cells are malfunctioning. But the cells need what? They need water. Every one of them. I don't care if it's a heart cell, liver cell, kidney cell, blood cell, uh, brain cell, bone cell. They all need hydrogen and oxygen. They all need amino acids. They all need 16 vitamins, up to. They all need up to 72 minerals. Every cell in the body needs every uh, lies en- enzymes as catalysts. They need phytonutrients, which is, comes from plant. They need chlorophyll, which comes from plant. They need essential fatty acids, which is the good oils or good fats. So if you notice, the plants will actually give every one of those elements to the cell. If you, if you if either you juice them or chew them in a salad form or uh, eat your fruits or veggies or nuts or seeds, from whatever comes from the ground or from the vine or the, from the uh, plant or tree is real food. But Franken foods come from box, can, jar, package <laughs> foods, which are not real food. <laughs> but, but people, it's if people think that's real food, it's box, can, jar, and package. And even children think that. Fruits and veggies come from grocery stores. They don't know they come from plant. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say there's a very big disconnect. And, uh, you know, 1900, 70% of the population was living on a farm. Right. So they had that connection with real food, clean food. Then as the years progressed, by 1970, only 30% lived on a farm right and now it's less than five yeah. percent wow. and yeah. and some of those farms are agri farms where right. they're just mono uh, crops right. you know two thousand acres of soybeans nothing else no greens you know no lettuce no parsley nothing mm-hmm. like that nothing to juice mm-hmm. right yeah right. so it's very sad and in a short period of time We've seen those changes. You know, Phyllis growing up in uh, Miami, there was a deer dairy right in the middle of Miami proper. Yeah. Mm. That you could get milk products. In fact, I think they even used to deliver them. Oh, yeah. They did, yeah, actually. They did. I, I'm also raised from Miami. Right. I was there till I was nine years old in Carroll City, and I remember the, the milkman knocking on the door. <laughs> <laughs> he even used to sing the song, uh, uh, something about uh, April flowers, bring spring May flowers, flowers, or something like that. He was, he was walking up. April and showers, every, bring yeah, that's flowers. what he used to sing. Here in white. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'll never forget it, but that was real milk, you're saying. I didn't realize that I, back then. <laughs> Yeah, no, now it's you know, homogenized and pasteurized. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, of course. And that's the beginning of, you know, the problems that we're having over the years. The, the, 
who would give up conveniences? Who would give up the modern life? Right. But what Steve's trying to help our, your listeners understand is the disconnect. Right. And when we have a disconnect over a period of, like he said, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, we're talking about many generations. Right. That's how, why we have children that think that milk comes from the grocery store or that, uh, you know, a hamburger or, or green beans come from the grocery store. Well, mm -hmm. they did. I yeah. mean, they're not wrong. But the issue is, like, how do we reconnect? So that we actually start to evaluate our food with a mind and a heart that has the correct information and that demands the things that will keep us healthy. Right. Why aren't we doing that? We're not saying give up conveniences. We're not saying give up the modern life. I think that we're being dumbed down so that we can be controlled by industries and people that are making a lot of money. After all, if you buy packaged food, it's like if you look at the percentage they're making on that food compared to produce, it's a, it's a big difference. And what we're doing is we're give, we keep giving over our power. Then we give over our health. Then we give over our children's health. And before you know it, we don't even realize it. We've depowered ourselves to the point where we don't think we could do anything, but we can. We can do a lot. And so I hope on this show that we could talk about what we can do and what are some of the maybe first steps, simple steps that anybody could do. Well, yeah, I think, definitely. yeah, I was going to say, I, I think that uh, people are becoming more conscious, aware of, of these things, maybe not a large percentage of the population, but it's a beginning. Right. And so we need to support businesses and professional people that are trying to get information out there that will change things in a big way, where they actually see our health is connected to having clean food, that Absolutely. it's important to have, you know, the vitamins and minerals. And if you're growing things uh, on depleted soil, you can't get those uh, minerals. And so, or with chemical fertilizer, where is the minerals? You know, yeah. they're not there. Duh. Like, so we need to support people that are doing that. The it's, it's, stuff, exactly. Yes. But at the same time, this is a wake up program. We're wake up people to the, the misinformed out there through our experiences. And most of the audience, I find, is just misinformed, just like they are with vaccinations. They have no idea what they're injecting into their children. Um, so it's real important that I allow Gary to share with the audience what Monsatano, I mentioned to you guys on the first yes, week, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what Monsatano was doing to our food because people don't know this stuff and then we'll absolutely get into the solution to the problem, but we need to make people aware of the problem because they have no idea. Right. Well, well, one of the things that at least some people realize the problem is because they're sick. Exactly. They don't feel up to, up to uh, you know, a healthy, what is a healthy person? If you're not vibrant, no matter what age you are, there's something wrong. If your child is getting sick all the time, there's something wrong. We have to look at what's wrong. There's, we're disconnected from our source. But like you, you know, said, they're so dumbed down, they can't even look to see what's wrong. So that's right. why Gary's going to share with the audience now what they're yes. doing. <laughs> what you. Monsanto's doing is they're trying to create better yields. So they're lying to the farmer saying, we're going to give you more yield, but they're using NPK, which is only three minerals out of 72. So where's the other 69 minerals? And like Stephen was saying in last um, show, that they can make the tomato look bigger and brighter with NPK, but there's no nutrients in it. So you're, you might as well eat the cardboard box that, it, that it's packaged in. You know, so, and then the styrofoam and everything else they package with gets leached into the fruit or the veggies. So you get a double whammy of GMOs, get a double whammy of the, uh, the uh, phosphates, combination with pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, uh, all the other genocides, because that's what they are, slow death, and then a combination of no nutrients in the fruit, but it has a taste to it. Now, if you taste an organic fruit versus a conventional, a big difference in taste. Yes. Here, here. And yes. Up until 10 years ago, they never had the technology to find out even what's in a, a spinach leaf. And they invented a, a, a scanner called spectromography scans, that they can actually scan the leaf and have a little micro uh, computer that actually picks up the micronutrients, not the macro, 
you know, the, the big vitamins like vitamin A and vitamin B and D are easy to pick up, but they don't know what's in, what's the, what's the background of these macronutrients are phytonutrients that are in the thousands. They found 11,980 nutrients in a spinach leaf. Yeah. And out of 11,980, you know how many they know about and they study? <laughs> 153. Yeah. Right. And they're yeah. experts. So they think they're experts. So I know in 153 nutrients in a spinach leaf, when all you have to do is take the spinach and juice it or put it in a salad, you're getting all 11,000 instead of getting the macronutrients only. So they pull out and put in a capsule or pull out and put in a tablet. So the supplementation that they're getting are the macronutrients, not the micro. They, they eliminate or trash the micro, and you need those micronutrients to make the macro work. Mm -hmm. yeah. They work together. All for loops. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, we were fortunate. Phyllis has a friend uh, that we've connected with for many years. He's a seaweed farmer in Maine. We talked about him last year. Yeah. Amen. And so we have been, <laughs> yeah, we have been eating seaweed for many years, but also, too, I use it as a spray, and I, I put it in the holes when we plant a tree or a shrub mm -hmm. so that the roots could go in it, but also at the same time, because sometimes it's not in, in a certain way that the plant could take it up if it's in the soil, but if it's sprayed on the leaf, they could absorb it also. So we make a foliar spray out of the seaweed uh, that he'll send us, and uh, it's helped us with the fruit set, mm. with fungus, and uh, a healthy and the plant. micronutrients that you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, right. You know, it's yeah. really interesting in what you mentioned last week in in the, in the in the first show that the microorganisms that they use to nourish the soil that nourishes the the plant that gives the nu nutrients of the plant with the sunlight. The sunlight actually. Um, matches with the phytonutrients and the microorganism to actually give the nutrient value of the plant. Then we eat the plant the second hand and get those nutrients that way. But the, uh, the, the interesting thing is look at the human gut. You have a human biome, which is the probiotics, and the microorganisms that we take in like Acidophilus, Bifidus, Silverius, Planetarium, there's different um, probiotic bacterium that are good bacteria, not bad, but then MDs think that all bacteria is bad. So they give antibiotics. <laughs> yes. So the antibiotics destroy the gut flora, oh. destroy the human biome, they wipe out your immune system. Your immune system is in the gut. It's not in the bone marrow. It's not in the thymus gland. It's not in the lymph nodes. It's in the gut, gut-associated lymphoid tissue. It's called GALT. So 70% of your AGE, AGI, AGA, when you hear these immunoglobulin components, those are all made in the gut but they're made by plant ingestion. They're not made by frankenfoods. So you can't eat macaroni yeah. and cheese and expect to get a good microbiotic <laughs> culturing in your gut. Well, it's amazing how resilient the human body is that we're exactly. even alive. <laughs> Right, exactly. exactly. Especially amazing. when they're combining the genes of other species. I'm right. wondering why even with cows and, and the hormones they put into our animals, why little girls are getting menstrual cycles earlier, why right. they're getting breast earlier. I mean, right. little girls look older than what they actually are because of all the hormones. And even with the vegetables, baby, tell them. Right. Well, the veggies, they actually splice the genes of tomatoes with a fish gene. So they want to, they put a flounder gene into a fish gene, a fish gene into the tomatoes to make them bigger and last longer. And so they don't frost at night. Mm -hmm. They're putting human DNA, human DNA in mm -hmm. strawberries. So they're bigger and last longer. So they're giving a shelf life to their products, but they're shortening your shelf life. Right. So your yeah. shelf life gets shortened. Well, theirs is longer. Yes. And, yes. And, and, we're, and we're buying into that. Yeah. Right. And that's yeah. the problem. Absolutely because of ignorance right. and of not paying attention to what's really going on. That's why it is important to get out the correct information. That's yeah. right. We're, we're an intelligent species and we have to do something about this. That's right. Blindly right. trusting, I call it. They bl we blindly trust. We blindly trust and hold our babies down to let them poison them. We blindly trust that the, the, the government, the people on all the government agencies are doing it for our best interest. We're not realizing that dollar signs is their motive. <laughs> you know, I mean, they, they're, all they see is the root of all evil, money, the love of money. That's their motive. And their best interest is not for us. And that's what people have to wake up to. Well, that's, 
Yeah, that's why it's so important for us to connect directly to the people. Absolutely. That are growing things and also people that are doing health care. That you're actually talking directly to that person and not to five or six other people that are representing them and they spend two minutes with you and they're gone and they got <laughs> that's right. 10, 10 people in the, in the office waiting for some kind of diagnosis. Well, why do we accept that? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it, you know, I can't understand why a person would accept that as if that's okay. Mm. It's time to stand up and say that's not okay. To well, be treated already, that way. Yeah, we're already, already, what's happened is the, the establishment and the, all the organizations have pushed better chemistry for better health. And people think that chemistry enhances the uh, nu- nutrient value of a food. It's not the actual micronutrients that are in the food. So they don't. They don't. They just don't know. They're, the education is the biggest thing that's missing, and especially in children, and especially in the in the mothers and fathers. And their mother and father's ignorance are passed down to the children. And now look at the obesity in children right now. I mean, it's like sixty percent of the children are obese. Are you yeah. kidding me? Children being obese. Mm. Because of the Franken foods that they're eating and no nutrient value, no microorganisms, no, no building blocks for their gut. So now they have stomach issues, digestion issues, bloating, flatulence. They got Crohn's disease. I, I, we, we, we know children that are nine years old that have gut problems. How is that? Mm-hmm. Or cancer. How do you get cancer at three years old? Mm. You know. Yeah, and it's rampant. <laughs> So are they addicted to these foods? Why are they eating something that's unhealthy for them? You get it right on the money for those. They use these chemicals and they, they, the scientists, the food scientists know what to mix. Like with McDonald's, they know what chemical to mix with what chemical to make you hungrier, to make you fatter, to make you eat more food. So they don't care about your health. They want you to eat another burger, another French fry, another shake. And how do they do it? They make the chemicals intensify the taste they and they make you crave it and they make you fatter they don't make you thinner they make you addicted to it i remember one of our researchers um actually said that one drop of a chemical in mcdonald's french fries literally would draw people into mcdonald's (laughs) they would smell it it, uh, (laughs) and it would just just smell it Right, oh, just by smelling, just smelling it, it, it would draw them in. So that's how much they've been working on getting people so unhealthy. That's why we're so appreciative <laughs> of what yeah, you guys and, are doing. Yeah, I was going to say intuitively, I, I, I knew that that was going on because I'll drive by a, a fast food place yep. around <laughs> noontime. And most people only have a half hour, an hour. Why right. would you be backed up down the street? 20 vehicles <laughs> waiting to get a sandwich. No. That doesn't make any sense to me. Insane. And so I told Phyllis, I said, those people are addicted. Wow. That's right. Yeah. They it's not even, it's not even, yeah, Stephen, it's not even real food. You can take a Happy Meal and buy one and don't even open it up. Just put it in your closet for two years and pull it back out and open it up. It looks like you, you can still eat it. No bugs, no mold, no it's fungus. It's so happy. No, it's still yeah. happy. <laughs> it's forever happy. It's preserved. It's, it's like a, a dead body that they uh, embalm the formaldehyde with. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the, you know, I was going to say one of the advantages that, that we had uh, about horticulture was that I wasn't educated in the university system for horticulture. Mm-hmm. I, I went to the university uh to expand my consciousness that was <laughs> that's great yeah. that's a lot of questions <laughs> and then then i discovered horticulture and then i learned from from different people mentors mm-hmm. i i had three or four great mentors that actually one of them grew up at 1901 he was born in 1901 mm-hmm. and he was just a wealth of information not only about horticulture but life in, in general sure. and the right things and so and also he connected the bible information with what we need to do today and he was a he was a kind of literal man so if i would say to him something like oh we called him uncle hiram because we adopted each other and so he's <laughs> Um, I, Uncle Hi- Hiram, the, 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 ki- the kids are hungry, so I have to go inside now and feed them. He says, he'd look at me, and I, and, he, and, I, and I knew something was wrong. He said, 
you don't have baby goats inside. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I have children. I have to go feed my children. You know, so he really kept us on on task when it came to thinking and helping us understand how to do things the correct way so that we would get the results we were looking for. And he didn't connect things to money, which was really refreshing. Mm. And in some ways, it's almost better not to be a consumer to, or to have money that uh, you could spend on things because there's really not that much out there that is of value. Mm -hmm. right. And so uh, in, in the farming, we found that there was a, a lot of organic matter out there that was available for free. People would love for you to come to their barn and get uh, horse manure. Or they'd love for you to come to the peanut factory and get peanut hulls after they, they shell them. Mm -hmm. uh, or you go to a sawmill and you could get the sawdust. There were just so many different places. Mm -hmm. We would bring trailers. They would load it up with peanut shells. We used to use those for uh, compost and for mulch. Wow. And places wow. uh, where they have hay. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Ruth Stout, but she was a famous uh, gardener in Maine, and she was gardening way into her 80s. And her big thing was she didn't have the energy to, to till things up, so she just covered her whole garden with uh, hay. And then when she wanted to plant, she would just pull <laughs> back the hay and plant the seeds right in there. <laughs> That's awesome. And so the hay would mulch it, yeah. it would conserve moisture, and for her, it worked out fine. And so we were looking for different uh, opportunities to, to get our information that worked for us. And every area is a little different. So we have to, and that's a good thing, because we can't use formulas for this. We see, as Gary was saying before, what happens when you start using formulas with things that you need to pay attention to rather than have a relationship with that, that your area, your environment, your zone, that plant, the tree, because you would know what to do, like Uncle Hiram, if you saw, if you were really looking at the tree, paying attention to it, and you had this relationship with it, you would do what was necessary. But if you, it's a formula, and I, I just heard them talking on the Florida Channel yesterday. Well, we've got these uh, these systems, and we're we're going to go from zone to zone, and then we spray, and then we do this, and then we start growing. You know, it's it's like they think that everything can be mechanized, right. and and the mechanization is taking its toll on our health. Maybe we are producing a lot of food, and maybe it has worked to a certain degree because. They're producing a lot of food, but look at the cost in that. If the cost is that people are dying right. and they're not healthy, then we have to look at how to change things. And how, okay, so keep the good part. You don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Perhaps we can do keep part of it, but we're going to have to stand up, wake up, and say, okay, let's do something different. The Rodell Foundation. And Pennsylvania has been doing things on a big scale for, you know, decades. And they found that they've, you know, they could, they could feed the soil and produce uh, yields all organically. Yes. Who's talking to them? You know, right. nobody. Right. Certainly yeah. our universities aren't. Yeah. And so, you know. Well, well the universities are controlled by uh, big business because they're right. donating so much money. Then that's they're right. telling you have to use these products, here's these products, and so they're pushing those products. You know, it's a vicious and, cycle. You know, I think that if we look back at, at the reasons for these things, we can see that the way capitalism works, and then you look at how it's been working, and you look at our government and how it works, of course, they're using capitalism to, you know, make things happen, like an engine, right? Get that engine going. But mm -hmm. where's the ethics? Where's the morals? Well, it cost, it Where's cost, the it, values in all that capitalism? Well, it costs us money somewhere We're, down the line if people aren't healthy. Mm -hmm. We're not saving any money. Yeah, It's costing us money. And you yeah. probably see that more than anybody when somebody comes to yeah. you. But, but see, Stephen, they don't want health, as you know. The drug companies make money on sickness, and the MDs make money on sickness, 
and the nurses do. So therefore, they're going to perpetrate a model that creates sickness, not health. How do you get sickness? You pollute the food, you pollute the water, you pollute the air, you pollute the environment blood. and your blood, okay. inject the blood, and therefore you get sick and therefore you have to run to them. And they use chemicals to treat the sickness that caused from the chemicals. Right. So the chemicals right. created the illness at the cell level and you, their solution is another chemical to treat the chemical uh, um, toxicity. Yeah, so like, well, know, that's, what they do. that's what they do in horticulture. Yeah, yeah exactly. they've created this situation. They've, yeah, they've right. destroyed all the microorganisms with that's synthetic right. uh, fertilizers and herbicides. Yeah, exactly. And then, then they have to take a spray plane and come over and spray fungicide. That's right. And, yeah. It just, Same thing it, in the human it, being. They destroy the gut flora so you have no probiotics. And now you get sick. And therefore, they use chemicals to treat the deficiency of your probiotics instead of giving you fermented foods like kimchi or sauerkraut. You know, these are the things that will culture the gut and get back those fermentation microorganisms. But they destroy the microorganism with antibiotics, antivirals, antifungals. So they kill off the good bacteria and the bad. And you get sick. And then their solution is another chemical on top of that. So we've been indoctrinated with chemical um, business or, or agriculture or using chemicals instead of using natural substance. But they can't make money on natural organic substance. They can't. So, so it's, better not to, it's better not to have money. <laughs> right. He calls it the medical money go round. The medical merry go round. Merry go round. <laughs> you know, they, you know, they it's, have to it's, keep us revolving. <laughs> uh -huh. It's interesting. We're, we have never been big consumers. And we were very thrifty. So mm -hmm. we weren't, and we were self employed. So we didn't have mm -hmm. all these kinds of health insurance and stuff. So we weren't running somewhere else. Sick and we were <laughs> Everything ourselves. Yeah. And so we were looking. Little did we know. <laughs> well, we were looking, well, we were looking at other people that had maintained their health. How right. did they, what did they deal with? You know, they didn't have, they were out in the middle of the country. The closest hospital was like 200 miles away. They weren't going to go to the hospital. <laughs> You know, so we looked at what they were doing and we tried to to figure out what was it to make an educated decision that we should do. Uh, and we weren't afraid. I, I think that's the big thing. Yeah. When when you're guided by fear, you'll yeah. go anywhere. That's right. When somebody tells you you're going to die in three months. Right. Yeah, you'll do anything that they say. You'll take maybe the, people, the radiation, the surgery. Yeah, maybe we can give you an extra month. Right. That's right. Instead of power, yeah. love, and sound mind like we're supposed to. And like I mentioned this week, you can't perfect perfection. Our creator's got it under control. It's man trying to overpower that perfection that messes everything up. So that's why we're so excited about uniting with you guys because we do uh, a lot of presentations and we do have a lot of members that we're teaching this <clears throat> to one-on-one -on -one and even at our presentations. And, you know, Father's opened a really big door, I've mentioned to you, in Ixtapa, Mexico, that we're going to be visiting in the next couple of weeks after we leave you guys to get the funding for. And these doors are most likely going to open, but it's already there, actually. Um, we're just waiting for the funding. And ironically, I don't know if I told you guys, but um, two of Gary's, gosh, 20 years ago healings contacted us just in the last week. Now, here we are waiting for the funding for all the equipment that Gary's been you know, experiencing and uh, looking into for the last 20 years, he's already got, you know, the whole system of what he wants to orchestrate for every, every member to go through to help them reverse cancer or whatever it is. And we need the money for it. And obviously, it, you know, finances are important. You can't just make this happen. So just in the last week, two people that Gary, one of them was an 11 year old little boy. What did he, what was he have? He was po uh, poisoned in Russia. He, uh, the Chernobyl blast, he was uh, poisoned with the, the nuclear waste. So no doctor would want to touch him. He was so polluted, he was on his deathbed, that every time a doctor would try to work with him, he, he'd get sicker, he'd get worse. So no doctor wanted to touch him. So I took him under my wing, and I says, Jan, we got to go real slow with this kid. I'm talking one drop of homeopathic, and no, that's it, and wait. And he'd vomit. I'd give him one more drop, he'd vomit. I'd give him another drop, he'd vomit. Then eventually I worked at two then three drops of home, uh, homeopathic drainage remedies, then three, then four. And it took me six months to get them up to 20 drops. 
But the eventually we got them well. With the nutrition. Yeah, and, and nutrition, juicing, right. and raw fruits and veggies and right. organic foods and everything. So right. the combination of everything we did with them got his health back. So she literally called last week, I can let you hear the message, and said, the Holy Spirit is telling me to reconnect with you again. Mm-hmm. That's her message says that exactly. Now, we haven't talked to her how long? Ten years ago. It's been 10, 12 years now. 12 years since Gary's connected with her. And here we are waiting for the funding for Mexico to happen. Her husband's a venture capitalist, multimillionaire, I think, yeah. Brooke. Anyway, long short, that was the first call. The second, That was the second call. The first call was Don Hancock. Don Hancock um, was given six weeks to live with melanoma skin cancer back in Texas. Stage with Gary. four. Stage four skin cancer. He all of a sudden calls us as well. He's starting these two businesses, one with a major ex-actor that's multi-billionaire. Um, and he wants to meet with us. I mean, he all of a sudden connected with us too last week. So it looks like this thing's moving forward, <laughs> which is real exciting to us. Yeah. Um, we want to talk with you guys about, you know, not only providing for maybe helping over there because we have a, a an area of farming there that we're planning on putting together, um, but also maybe even teaching the Mexican farmers how to do it correctly. But we also will have tons of people here in the States because it's not like we're going to just ignore everybody here in the U.S. We have tons of patients all over the, the nation. So, you know, we want to talk about that with you guys and what we can do and, you know. Well, we'd love to help in any way. Yeah. yeah. Also, too, I wanted to tell you, since I talked to you, I've been craving juice. I don't know. <laughs> what is, what I'm just so thirsty for juice all the time now. <laughs> I just want solid food. I haven't, you know, I just want juice now. <laughs> We just had our first meal, raw meal last night. I was going to try to just juice, but then we remembered that we have to get the coach out of here and a lot of things we have to go through traveling and everything is going to be tough just to do the juice only. So we are Uh doing the way the manual says. Our manual says that you can eat the third night and then you can have one raw meal and two juices the rest of the 21 days. So we are doing that. And I want to let you know that in case you're preparing just to juice for us while we're there. (laughs) We we can enjoy your garden too. (laughs) Uh, looking forward to it. <laughs> That's wonderful. So explain to people in detail what you do to actually help them start providing the their own good food in their own backyard like you guys did. I mean, what, what do you, how do you well, teach them this? Well, like, like Phyllis said, each person, it, it's an individual wherever they're living. Mm-hmm. So if you're living in a, uh, an apartment, you don't have much space. Mm-hmm. You could utilize a little bit of space in the kitchen, like we had talked about, maybe mm-hmm. possibly doing uh, window. a window with some sprouts or some wheatgrass or microgreens, those kind of things. But also, too, look around the neighborhood because there's a lot of uh, community gardens popping up. Uh, or spaces that you could use, uh, create a community garden. Mm-hmm. If it's not one that's close to you, then by for all means, go out and ask if there's one, or find a space. Oftentimes, there's abandoned lots and places that would be wonderful gardens. Well, the city would rather have somebody taking care of these than them maintaining them. And I know in some of the lower areas uh, where they're prone to flooding, they've gotten rid of uh, (laughs) the houses. They've had to demo the house, and so they just have this lot, and the city or county comes in every so often and just mows. But I'm sure that little neighborhood could, you know, talk to the, the county or the city about making a, a community garden. I'm sure that that would be fine with it. Oh, of course, you need water. And uh, here we have a lot of wells. So mm-hmm. you get the aquifer water. But if you're in a city, you're probably going to be using the city water. You know, and I think that's one of the big issues with people, too. You know that, Gary. A person has to ask, where's my water source? Where is my water coming from? Here in this area, in the cities at least, they of course they put chlorination in it and they're putting fluoride in the water. So you have to filter your water if okay. you want pure water. There's no way. I mean, you can't cook. You can't drink your water unless it's fi- filtered. And you have to research to see what filters will take out the, the, the chemicals they're putting in the water for so-called High, you know, hygiene, and then also the the fluoride that's in the water because mm-hmm. every every filter will not take out fluoride. That's and right. That, yeah. yeah, and then and that goes. Have, 
Go ahead. I was going to say we do have filters like shower filters that we promote. We have on our own shower head. Okay. Um, and then also um, uh, uh, home water filter things, uh, uh, water machine for the sink. Um, but we need to definitely research for farming because obviously they would need a lot more water than just that. Um, but also another important thing that I know you guys mentioned was the uh, three foot of organic soil you put on top of the contaminated soil. Because obviously with the chemtrails and all the poisons in the air, you know, the soil is not good either. <laughs> so tell them yeah, about so that. We can, yeah, we can have raised beds. But just to, to uh, address the watering thing, yeah. here in Florida, we have usually 60 some inches of rain a year in North Florida. This year, we've had over 80, maybe 90. It, it was a very wet year. But we could reclaim a lot of that water. You know, a Literally lot of people, tens of thousands of gallons. Yeah. So the people, like in the Bahamas, underneath their homes, they, they have cisterns gathering, you know, the thousands of ga the gallons. The rainwater, yeah. Yeah. That they use for their own personal consumption, but also for gardening. It's so, a It's, it's, a, a, it's, it's a, a common drink. What, it's say? a common usage. Well, they filter the water because you should still filter the water if you're going right. to drink it or yeah. eat, use it. That's For gardening, say. it's different, yeah. But um, it's a common use in uh, on the Caribbean islands. They do not have wells. You know, I mean, if you drill down, you get salinated water. And plus, it's mountainous. If you go to places... You know, in like the Virgin Islands, stuff, it's mountainous there in, in Jamaica. It's very expensive to drill wells. And sometimes they hit water that's salty. So they have to get water from someplace. And what they do, and this is a common thing, this is rich and poor. They don't, you know, everybody does this. They have houses. The whole roof collects the water. And then the water goes under the house and it's stored. <clears throat> and then they use it. Because they told me when I was there... They can't afford to buy water, and the water they bring isn't any good anyway. And it's on plastic bottles, and everybody, it says pure water, but you don't know where it's from and stuff like that. Right. So um, in Florida, no one's paying attention to um, really water harvesting. We call it water harvesting. Yep. In dry climates, like in Utah and, and places in Australia, they think about that. Because if you're only getting 9 inches a year or 10 inches a year, 12 inches a year, then you're going to harvest your water, you mm. know, because it's going to it's going to be helpful. Well, maybe people should take their swimming pools and empty out all the chlorinated water and just <laughs> use water that is coming off the roof. You know, we have done some uh, water features where you can actually get in and swim that uh, aren't uh, chlorinated, and we use biological controls to filter the water and to deal with uh, algae. But it's like a, more of a, a mountain stream water. And so people can have water features that actually hold water. And when you come, we have one at the farm we can show you that yeah. we're, we're constructing right now. Yeah. But there's so many different possibilities depending on where you live. But we all have to see the value in working together right. to solve this. It's a win-win situation for everybody. If we're able to use the garbage and not fill up landfills, with garbage, people are still throwing food waste out, or or, or kitchen waste. You know, just or using a a, uh, a disposal in their sink. We need to use all that. That, that for eggshells. <laughs> Why? An eggshell is wonderful source of nutrients in your compost. Mm -hmm. So we, mm -hmm. you know, what we do is uh, we help people to understand easy composting, more sophisticated composting, and there's so many easy ways. You know, sometimes we'll call it the, the easy composting or the poor man's compost. You go out with a post hole digger and you dig a deep hole and you put your, your kitchen waste in there. You know, the parts of the carrot you didn't use or the part and uh, or the I mean, you can't use because almost every part, if it's an organic vegetable, you can use. And if you're not using it, you're wasting your money because you uh -huh. could take the part that you're not using and you could use it for stock. You know, make vegetable stock for yourself. It, I mean, if well, it's juice, not the tastiest part, that's okay. But, but juice, juice pulp is, is good. As a matter of fact, I saw some, something on TV the other day about this woman that uh, had a tofu business. And uh, <clears throat> all the, uh, the leftovers after she 
took everything out of the soybeans that she wanted, gave it to these people that put them in these little bags and inoculated it with mushrooms. And so they were growing mushrooms in this little bag, you know, uh, with the soybean waste. It was very uh, ingenious. I think they mixed it with a, a little bit of sawdust too. But it was some way to recycle the whole thing. And uh, she was using organic soybeans. It was really nice to see that, where everybody saw that it was a win-win situation. You know, she was supporting a, a local farmer that was, he didn't, it, it was direct marketing. So he was getting much more for his product than he would if he sold it to a big uh, co-op or conglomerate. We've seen that happen quite a few times. We were up in Pennsylvania and this beautiful dairy, they had a, um, a bed and breakfast, and we stayed there, and they had... It was in Lancaster. It was in Lancaster, PA. They had, uh, I think, 40 head of... Uh, 80. 80. 80 head of cattle, okay. uh, uh, cows, and they were milking, milk cows. Mm. And they milked them every day, and Lando Lakes came and with, with the, the big truck and bought it from them. There was no direct marketing. Now, for some people, they have to do that. They don't have a storage facility. Mm -hmm. You know, if you got 80 cows, you got a lot of milk. You got to get rid of it. But that's why we have to support people that have businesses like that so they're able to directly sell it to, to every homeowner within a certain radius around their good milk that... Uh, Hasn't been tampered these, with. This, these Mennonite people, and they did everything the old way. Mm -hmm. So all their cows were walking around in fields eating the grass. Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, they harvested the hay in the wintertime to feed them. So mm -hmm. they were doing things the old way. Whether mm -hmm. that was chemicalized or not at that time, this was a long time ago, I can't recall. But the issue is that there is a way to connect, reconnect, like Steve was talking about before, so that people can feel supported. They were going to sell their farm because mm -hmm. they didn't know how they would continue. Yeah. They because all worked off of the farm, too. All the, yeah, so the three children and the, and the parents. They were working in restaurants and doing other jobs that weren't related to the farm. It was really kind of sad because hard workers. As a matter of fact, a cute little story. Uh, when I heard that they were milking the cows in the morning, we got there that night and it was dark. And I said, oh, I'd love to come out and help you and stuff. So I got up at like 6 o'clock and I'm walking out and these two girls are walking down the road and they had their cute little dresses on. And they had sneakers that were covered in cow, cow manure. And they said, uh, Mr. Fisher, you're a little late. You should have got up at 4 o'clock. <laughs> they were <laughs> I was up at six. Okay, I'm ready to work. Okay, they said we're finished. <laughs> I mean, two of them weren't over. Uh, they were between the ages of probably 16 and 20. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're very familiar with the Amish community out there. We go out to Lancaster about twice a year. We have a lot of people out there that wait for us to come do our scans, and we're actually talking oh, about a presentation out there. Yeah. We've been going for, what, about five years now? Yeah, five years. And we've opened the door with the Stoltzfuses, the Fishers, the, you know, the Peter Symes, all of them. We've and They all tell each other. But anyway, yes. um, we have Good. found that the powers that be have infiltrated. The old way they used to do everything was the correct way, mm. but now they're starting to vaccinate their their children right. now they're starting to use hormones like a lot of the farmers markets i actually went to that one right there in downtown intercourse and i walked around and every single farm was using bug spray and or hormones yeah. all the amish i think i found one that didn't use it you know so we got to go back to reminding them what their ancestors used to do <laughs> yeah and support them right you know because we are we are at this place in our um consciousness where we think like Gary was talking about before we think that technology or chemicalization is going to save us we've mm -hmm. been duped into believing that mm -hmm. if we don't do that there won't be enough food in the world but right. but uh, I mean those are all advertising techniques is what they right. were they right. are just telling us things so they can control us right. and certainly certainly we need to be able to work together and reconnect but we need to do this 
with this intelligence from our source. We need to do this with the help of, of divinity so that we do it correctly instead of continuing on this road of destruction. It's just not going to work much longer. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I think that I noticed is that I noticed the same people that are doing this, um, like doctors, are feeding their children the same things that yeah. and tantalizing their children and their yeah. families. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's not always, you know, uh, that there's just some kind of, of disconnect. So they're doing it to other people because they believe in it. Mm -hmm. They right. believe in it somehow so much that they're actually doing the same things. I mean, some of the doctors that you see on PBS now will admit that. You know, they have some shows on PBS where they mm -hmm. tell you how far they've come and they're into functional and integrational me medicine now and stuff like that. So that they're saying, yeah, I mean, I was getting sick and I had to find the reason why. And, you know, I was killing myself with the foods and the, you know, think the techniques that I was using. Our dentists are the same way. Yeah. You know, the reason why for this, the reason why is they can't, they can't be honest in med school of telling them what the body is made of. Because if they ever did, they'd be questioning, that's creationism, that's intelligence. They can't go there because they're evolutionists. So they have to stay in the evolutionary model. You're a monkey, you come from a horse or a calf, from primordial soup from six billion years ago, and they yeah. buy that lie. And they don't tell them that nutrition feeds the cells. They think that pharmaceuticals feed the cell, the chemicals. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is ask them, an MD, hey, hey doc, What's the nuts and bolts? What's the bricks and mortar? What's the scaffolding of a human? What's it? What's the composition? If they knew, they say cells. Cells form tissues. Tissues form organs. Organs form systems, and systems form the body. Okay, doc. Then we name one drug that has any water in it for the cell, because the cell needs water. Name one drug that you use, doc, that has amino acids in it. Name one drug that has phytonutrients. Name one drug that has essential fatty acids. Name one drug that has carbohydrate. Name one drug that has protein. Name one drug that has antioxidants. And they'll, they'll look at you with a blank stare. They don't know. I mean, they, nutrition's an elective class in medical school. They get the uh, choice to take it or not. Or not. I mean, I think I mentioned to you on the phone this week, or maybe I did not. But anyway, when my daughter was sick with the mono before she passed away, she was losing weight. And I called the top infectious disease specialist that diagnosed her. And I said, could this be something more? She's losing weight. Mono's not a disease that you regress. You usually progress. You know, she'd have good days and bad days type of thing. You know what he told me? Feed her ice cream. Feed her Oreo cookies. The top infectious disease specialist at Miami Children's Hospital is mm -hmm. telling me to feed her sugar. So it's an elective class. And even if they do choose to take it, it's what's a protein, what's a carbohydrate, what's a fat. They don't know it has anything to do with health. They literally had a McDonald's at the Joe DiMaggio Hospital that she passed away at. A McDonald's underneath that encouraging people to go eat that Franken food. <laughs> that's all it is, is Franken food. And that's the South American diet, too. I mean, that's people you know what's amazing. Is the, the, every MD will tell you nutrition has nothing to do with illness. Then all you have to do is stop them and say, okay, doc, if you think that's true, then explain to me how you can die of a nutrient deficiency. One nutrient is called scurvy. We all know scurvy kills you. That's a vitamin C deficiency. That's not a drug deficiency, doc. That's a vitamin <laughs> C deficiency. What about rickets, doc? What about beriberi with B vitamin deficiencies? What about anemia? That's iron deficiency. These are all nutrients, not pharmaceuticals. That's how you get them. But you got to make them think past their nose. Otherwise, they'll, they'll try to railroad you in, in, in their, their belief. But if you go head to head with them with common sense, they'll run out the back door. Yeah. They mm -hmm. can't handle your questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's, that's an educational deficiency, isn't it? Yeah. So that's That goes back to fear the fear yes. of questioning right. something that you thought was the truth. Right. I'm not, I'm not afraid to say, oh, I made a mistake or mm. I thought it was like when? this. But when you're afraid to accept the truth, right. then you can't move ahead. Then you're right. stuck and you say, ah, he's a quack. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's right. crazy. 
That's right. Yeah. They discredit anyone that's speaking truth, unfortunately. But that's why we're so appreciative with what you guys have been doing for so long. Oh, my gosh. I mean, and, and hopefully we can wake up so many more people to start doing it. Because like you said, all of us together making this change, all of us together waking up and, and choosing to put our health into our own hands instead of just blindly trusting the medical doctors who are trained by the drug companies. You know, the textbooks are written by the drug companies, you know, so all they're taught, like Gary teaches, is not doctors. You know, our master physician created us. They're taught to be symptomologists. Just mask the symptom, you know, snip the wire to the blinking oil light he uses in his book. So, yeah, it's, it's just so important that people learn what you guys are doing and how they can very easily do it themselves. Oh, yes. Yes. And I, and I think that everybody should be interested in this information, even yeah. doctors. Yeah, Even absolutely. people that are, are creating chemicals or chemists, you know, no. I mean, they have sick children, too. They have sick relatives. They have they're not feeling good every day. All and right. so this, the solutions that we're talking about are things that people actually enjoy. Going back to what we're talking about, anybody can take the first step. I mean, it's fun to grow sprouts. It's fun to see a little seed turn into this little plant that you can eat and it tastes good. Mm -hmm. and it really, I mean, you could immediately like sense that this, that these wonderful essence of going into the body and doing something good for you. You sense that qu quickly. It's not something you have to wait for. You know, there's the chlorophyll in a sprout is, is, literally something that's right there and available for you immediately and you taste it mm -hmm. you know and so i think that you know uh starting to just <clears throat> as a first step paying attention to what you're eating look at the source of where that food comes for, from and seeing where you can maybe make some different decisions is there a farmer's market is there a grower's market and an organic market we have several in little tallahassee in a bigger city they might have massive ones sometimes the farmer's market in a city especially if it's surrounded by a rural area might be what they call you know the usda market and so the people in the area are bringing things in you don't know if they're organic or not and you could determine by asking questions, where is this from? How are they growing it? Right. That's that's going from maybe dead food to at least fresh food. Right. You know, that's, take your children, take your neighbor's children. Go hang out there. It's a colorful place. That's right. Yeah, my son, said, yeah, my son I, when I was talking to him th this morning and telling him that we were going to have a conversation with you, he said there's a, a disconnect that people have from food, especially <laughs> meat. He said... They don't even think it was something that was alive at one time. Mm. And so when you have a reverence for something and you love something, you take care of it. You take care of your food. You take care of your environment. You take care of your body. You take care of your children. Those are the, And with the proper information, with correct information, we could do that. But we're so confused. We're not educated in school to do that. And so that's why I really love you people, that you're traveling, giving people correct information, and setting people free. Freedom yeah. means a lot to me. That's yeah. why we live in the country. Mm -hmm. So right. we, I don't need to have somebody tell me what to do. No, no. <laughs> that's why it's so important to get this education out there. And we're running out of time now. Thank you again yes. for all well, your Well, thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you. And... Uh, <laughs> We'll talk later. And Gary, it was a real pleasure to, to, to talk to you. No, yeah, I think the last time I saw you, you couldn't talk too good. You had a bunch of stuff in your mouth <laughs> at the dentist office. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, thank you for your time, guys, and we'll see you next week. Okay. And, you take uh, Yep, and, and, and everybody, we are listening to Vic Fellowship. Our shows can be accessed on the front page of our vacinfo.org website on the belly of a little boy flexing his muscles. We're on every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, and our contact number is 800-939-8227. Again, if you have any questions about today's show, just call the voicemail line 862-800-6805. Leave your name, your question, and let them know it's for our What in the Cell is Going On show. We thank Progressive Radio Network for allowing us to give you this uncompromised truth and y'all bless to everyone. Thank you.